Uh, in this half of the show, I want to go ahead and talk about something a little bit outside of the general theme of the show, the very fascinating topic of creepy clowns. And we're seeing this pop up all over the U.S. and several countries overseas. And it's affected a lot of different things. Um, we've seen it affect Target. Uh, locally here in the Tampa area, um, Goodwill announced they will not sell clown costumes. And uh, the granddaddy of it all, as CNN describes it, McDonald's announced um, this week that Ronald McDonald is going on the down low. So kind of sad, but this is what's happening. And uh, let's learn a little bit more about it. Joining me now to discuss the history and the phobia that we have with creepy clowns is Dr. Frank McAndrew. Dr. McAndrew is a professor of psychology at Knox College in Illinois. Dr. McAndrew, sir, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you, Robert. Happy to be here. Uh, All right, great. Okay, where do I start? Creepy uh, clown sightings are occurring in more than half the states, uh, several countries, and it appears that some of them have less than honorable motives. Um, Why do you think we're seeing this surge recently? Well, I don't know what kicked it off, but once it gets kicked off, it takes on a life of its own. Um, Most of the cases actually have turned out to be hoaxes, either perpetrated by people who just want a good story to tell, or often by kids who come home all excited, swearing they saw something. And of course, if their parents are going to make a mistake, they want to make a mistake in the direction of caution. Mm -hmm. So they report it to the police and the whole thing takes off. In those few cases where they actually have found somebody in a clown suit running around, it's what you might expect. Um, Young males um, out for some fun and trying to impress their friends. Okay, so mostly pranksters, not so much criminal intent. That's right. There's, I don't think there's a whole lot of real killer clowns running around. Okay, good. That's good to know. <laughs> now, this, of course, is not the first time that this has happened. Uh, there's a history concerning clowns in this manner. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, the first time this really happened on a large scale was back in the early 1980s uh, around the Boston area. And this was shortly after the whole John Wayne Gacy incident had been in the news. Of course, John Wayne Gacy was the guy who used to dress up as a clown and work kids' birthday parties. He also painted pictures of clowns. And then they found out, of course, that he'd killed about 33 people and buried them in the crawl space of his house. And so forever after, clowns and serial killers were linked in the public's mind. And it was right after this where Hollywood sort of uh, picked up the ball and ran with it. And since then, there's probably been about a dozen different movies featuring the killer clown as the villain. And so... um, I think that's the reason it first showed up. The only thing I can think of that has anything to do with it showing up right now is the election. Really? Well, I'm I'm only half joking. Okay. But but having clowns in our consciousness, you know, uh, I won't go any further with that, I guess. Uh, All right. I got you. All right. Now, there's clearly a fear of clowns. It's, It's, I guess it's legitimate. Is, is, is there a phobia? Is there a name for this there phobia? There is. Uh, cool, coolrophobia. Um, and I guess the name has been around for a long time. I didn't know about that myself until I started writing about the uh, clown stuff just a, about a month ago. Uh, but yes, and clowns press a lot of buttons in our brains that would creep us out in general. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on creepiness. And a lot of it seems to be our reaction to situations where it's not clear if there's a threat to us or not. So we can be creeped out by places, right? You're in a dark alley at night, and you don't know if there's anything to be afraid of, but you certainly want to get out of there as fast as you can, and you're uncomfortable. Um, Sometimes you're talking to a person who's sending off a creepy vibe, and you don't want to scream and run away because that would be rude. But on the other hand, maybe you should scream and run away. So when we're kind of paralyzed, not knowing if there's something to be afraid of or not, we feel what I call creeped out. And clowns have all of this unpredictable stuff rolled into them. Um, You can't tell who they are or you can't tell what they're really feeling because of the makeup they have on. They have the funny clothes and the wigs and the big shoes. They're mischievous, right? You never know if you're going to get a pie in the face or some other prank is going to get played on you. So... If you've got a person who's willing to dress that way and act in unusual ways, you start to wonder what other rules might they be willing to break. Interesting. Now, are there any studies out there that talk about uh, coolrophobia? And uh, 
Do we, do we know what percentage of people actually fear clowns? Is there such a, a number out there? I don't think there is such a number out okay. there. I think I would have run across that if there is, but yeah. it, it apparently is not an uncommon thing. Right. Uh, so, yeah, there, there must be enough for it to have a name. Now, you mentioned the pop culture ha- has contributed to the fear, and we all know about it. But now these clowns, though, had like sharp teeth, and th- th- does that make a difference? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, because then the clown is looking even more potentially threatening. But I don't think pop culture created this. I think pop culture in some ways is giving the people what they want. In other words, uh, we know that there's already a predisposition to be afraid of some things more than others, and clowns fall into that category. So, you know, they are featuring killer clowns rather than killer florists or killer bartenders or some other (laughs) occupation that we wouldn't normally fear so much. Well, that's interesting. And that really leads into my next question. Are there other types of people or occupations that carry with them the same creepiness of a clown or a, or a similar creepiness? Well, we uh, did a study where one of the things they did in the study was to rate the creepiness of various occupations. And clown came in number one on the list. But uh, there were a couple of others that weren't too far behind it, most notably taxidermists and um, undertakers. Hmm. And if you think about it, These are people who've chosen an occupation where they spend their time with things that are dead. And that's something most of us would probably prefer not to do. And so you start to think about a person who chooses to spend their life doing that. And that's unusual. And what other ways might they be unusual? And if they like dead things, maybe they'll like me better if I'm dead. You know, your mind starts racing all these ridiculous (laughs) places. Well, you got me thinking now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, anything that's, that tags a person as being unusual and outside of the norm, especially if they're unusual in a way that's potentially threatening, mm-hmm. such as somebody who's fascinated by death uh, or somebody who's likely to play pranks on you, um, immediately we're on our guard. Gotcha. And uh, last question, uh, Dr. McAndrew, is, is there, what can be done to address this phobia if you are suffering from it? Well, I think it's like any other phobia. Um, You can, in very small steps, what psychologists call systematic desensitization, sort of acclimate yourself. Maybe you can look at books with pictures of clowns until that doesn't freak you out anymore. And then um, maybe you can watch them on television and get yourself to the point where you can actually go to a circus and sit there and watch them and not run screaming for the exits. But um, I think the... Clown phobias, okay, if you've got a fear of heights or a fear of something that's going to interrupt your day-to-day life, uh, you have to deal with it. But you can walk around in the world and be afraid of clowns and live a pretty normal life because you're not going to run into them that often because you know where they hang out and you can avoid them, (laughs) which is one of the reasons why this creepy clown lurking in your neighborhood thing is so scary because now people who have that phobia can't avoid them because you never know when you're going to run into one. Now, that, isn't this a little dangerous for those that are dressed up as clowns, though? Because they may run and try to scare the wrong person. As a matter of fact, um, contrary to the belief that these clowns are going around killing people, there have been several cases of uh, people in clown costumes who were just out uh, creating pranks, being attacked, and kind of beaten up pretty badly. Um, so you're absolutely right about that. Well, that should... Uh uh, make somebody reconsider uh, being a creepy clown. It, it should, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Frank McAndrew, for your time and expertise, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome.